Welcome back, mystery lovers. Only Murders in the Building Season 4, Episode 6 just threw us a curveball with one of the most creative and suspenseful installments yet. Hidden cameras, uh, a killer on the loose, and more mind-boggling revelations. What more could we ask for? This episode has us questioning everyone, and trust is hanging by a thread. Today we're going deep, breaking down every clue, analyzing those jaw-dropping twists, and diving into some theories that might just blow your mind. Stick with me, because by the end of this, you'll be counting down the seconds to episode 7. Trust me, this is an episode you need to see from all angles. There's so much to unpack, and you won't want to miss a second. This week's episode, Blow Up, took inspiration from the 1966 psychological thriller of the same name, a classic film where a photographer accidentally stumbles upon evidence of a murder hidden in plain sight. Sound familiar? In a brilliant nod to the original, Only Murders wove that theme through the episode with masterful precision. We've got hidden cameras, surveillance footage, and a mystery so tangled that it feels like every time we get close to the truth, we're just seeing a distorted version of reality. And the biggest twist of all, the shocking reveal that Professor Dudinoff has been dead this whole time. Now, Charles, Mabel, and Oliver are not just solving a murder. They've become targets themselves. But before we dive into all the major revelations, let's talk about the vibe of this episode. Did anyone else notice how different it felt? The found footage documentary style was a bold choice, and it wasn't just a fun gimmick. The raw angles and abrupt cuts pulled us right, at, right into the chaos and paranoia that's bubbling under the surface. It felt like we were spying on the trio through hidden cameras ourselves, adding a whole new layer of tension. This wasn't just storytelling, it was an experience. Let's start with the most obvious piece of the puzzle, the blow-up reference. This entire episode plays on the idea of seeing things, but not necessarily understanding them. In the original movie, the photographer is obsessed with figuring out what he captured on film. Here, it's a similar story. Tony and Trina, two students of the now-deceased Dudinoff, are told to keep shooting. The result? An overabundance of cameras that capture everything from Oliver and Charles's apartment antics to their most private moments. The constant surveillance raises a critical question. How much of what we see is being manipulated? This is where the only murders writers really shine. By playing with different camera perspectives, they give us multiple truths, each slightly different depending on who's behind the lens. The brothers' sisters are using their documentary footage to spin the narrative, but we can't forget, they're also suspects. If they're in control of what we're seeing, what are they hiding? And even more importantly, what are they choosing not to show us? This is a subtle but brilliant commentary on how much power the person behind the camera holds in shaping the story. Now let's shift gears and talk about the killer. The revelation that Professor Dudinoff has been dead for a while throws everything we thought we knew into chaos. Just when we thought we were closing in on the truth, we find out that the person supposedly sending cryptic messages and body parts from Portugal is a fraud. This opens the door to a slew of new suspects, especially those who had close ties to Dudinoff. These are people who knew him well enough to cover up his death and manipulate events to stay one step ahead of the trio. It's chilling, really. Whoever orchestrated this knows exactly how to play this game, and it feels like Charles, Mabel, and Oliver are caught in their web. Let's dig deeper into the suspects, because at this point, everyone seems suspicious. First up, Vince and Rudy. Vince, who was part of Dudinoff's inner circle, has been lurking in the shadows for a while, but his involvement in this episode feels significant. His reaction to Dudinoff's death seemed genuine, but the details surrounding him just don't add up. I mean, the guy was hanging out with Rudy, talking about drones and win windows, right after we were told those windows were impossible to open. And now, suddenly they work just fine, Come on, that can't be a coincidence. Something's definitely off with Vince. Then there's Rudy, the wild card. His eagerness to throw the brother's sisters under the bus is a bit too convenient. Is he trying to shift suspicion away from himself? Rudy has deep ties to the Arconia and seems to know more than he's letting on. The way he shares information is calculated, almost like he's guiding the investigation toward the wrong conclusion. 
Could Rudy be the mastermind behind this all, pulling the strings while staying out of the spotlight? And now, the brothers' sisters. These two are straight up creepy. Their admission that they would have killed for Dudnoff isn't just a passing remark. It's a massive red flag. They were obsessed with gaining his approval, so obsessed that you have to wonder, could that obsession have driven them to murder? Their visit to the Arconia the night of Saz's murder wasn't a coincidence, that's for sure. Plus, the suitcase filled with cameras they brought for their documentary? Too convenient. And the discovery of hidden cameras that didn't belong to them? That's next-level chilling. Someone's been watching, and I'm betting it's someone who knows exactly what's going on. Now let's get to that ending. Wow. The moment the trio finds that hidden camera that didn't belong to the brothers' sisters? It's like the rug got pulled out from under us. Someone's been watching them this whole time. Not only that, but they've been manipulating them, feeding them clues and guiding the investigation. And then the text from Saz's phone with surveillance footage of the trio and the message, I'm watching you, is bone chilling, right? This is a game changer. It tells us that the killer has been orchestrating events from the start, controlling not just what happens, but how the trio reacts to it. Every lead they've followed could be a red herring. Every clue, a trap. The Arconia itself might be bugged, meaning nowhere is safe. The stakes just went through the roof. It's no longer about solving a murder. It's about staying alive while a killer who knows their every move plays a twisted game with them. Looking ahead to episode 7, Valley of the Dolls, we're expecting more psychological drama and even deeper dives into the twisted relationship between the brothers' sisters and Dudnoff. Will we finally get some answers, or are we about to be led even further down the rabbit hole? It's clear that nothing is what it seems, and episode 7 promises to unravel even more of this intricate mystery. All right, now it's time to get into the wild theories. And I know you have some too, so drop them in the comments. Could Saz have faked her own death to manipulate events from the shadows? It seems a bit too obvious for this show, but stranger things have happened. Another theory? The brother's sisters might have killed Dudinoff, not out of hate, but in a twisted attempt to gain his approval posthumously. But could they be smart enough to frame someone else and get away with it? Personally, I think Rudy and Vince are in this way deeper than they're letting on. There's something fishy uh, about Rudy's constant deflections and Vince's sudden ability to open his apartment windows doesn't sit right with me. These two right with me. These two know more than they're saying, and it wouldn't surprise me if they were working together. But with this show, you never know. We could be looking right at the killer and still be none the wiser. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into Only Murders in the Building, Season 4, Episode 6. Between the hidden cameras, the twisted suspects, and a killer who's always one step ahead, things are getting more intense by the minute. Who do you think is behind the murders? Have we been misled once again, or have we already met the killer? Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more episode breakdowns, theories, and ending explanations. Thanks for watching, and remember, Someone's always watching in the Arconia. Thanks for watching, and if you are new to our channel, subscribe and click the bell icon so you do not miss out on our latest videos.